It was announced this week that you are uh, retiring. Yes. Yes. End of December. Yes, sir. End of December. After you're out with the old, in with the new, you know, it's a good uh, end of the year. Gives some time for transition. But why the end of this year? What was it about, you know, 2021 that you said, okay, it's time? It's, you know, as I thought back on it, and, you know, and certainly my wife and I, you know, we've been talking about it and thinking about it for a little while and everything like that. And we've had some really neat positive things, you know, back in end of July, we became grandparents for the first time. And that really is an amazing reality check as far as like, uh, you know, your priorities in life and what's important. And, and then uh, I had to, on the other end of the spectrum, I got a, I ended up having a hernia and having to have surgery in, in August. And, you know, it makes you realize that, you know, life is short, you know, and your health can change in an instant. My goodness gracious. We see it so much in this profession where, you know, that unexpected thing happens and you don't get an opportunity to enjoy, you know, your life moving forward. And this, uh, you know, the, the, the job, the career, especially when you get to like the fire chief level, it, I mean, it's 24 seven day, night, it, it consumes you, you know, and uh, I just really been the, the last few years between budgets and COVID and it just, it kind of hit hit me that, uh, yeah, it, it's time. Now, people that have known you throughout your career know this, but there may be, you know, there's a lot of people that's moved here, you know, since you've been chief, and they may not know that you've uh, been with this same department for more than 35 years. Yes, yeah, I started, to, I moved to Pauley's Island in August of 1985. Uh, I did not have any kind of fire training or anything like that. It was something that I really was very interested in growing up, you know, like many, many people. Uh, I'm a product of the Johnny Gage and Rory DeSoto Squad 51 emergency, you know, favorite TV show. And and so when I moved here in August of 85, I actually didn't know anyone. It was a volunteer fire department. Mike Mock was the big chief, but it was uh, all volunteers. And, and uh, I thought it would be a really neat way to meet people and uh, also get involved in something that I thought I really would like. So I joined as a volunteer in August of 85 when I moved here. Um, loved it, loved it, you know. Got my, all my firefighter training, got my EMT training, and then in uh, October of 86, well, September, October of 86, when they decided that they got funding for three paid firefighters, um, uh, I was fortunate enough to be one of the first three, and uh, so my I started as an employee, if you will, in October 1st of 1986, and, and like you said, it's been the same department uh, for my entire career. I had the fortune of being able to grow with the department and move up the ranks as, you know, as that opportunity presented itself. And so you were named chief in 2003, so um, a little less than two decades doing that. Um, why did you want to be chief? Um, you know, when I when I joined as a when I joined the department, I, I obviously never really entered my mind that that might be. Or when I joined as a volunteer, it never even really entered my mind that it might become my career. You know, and and um, again, I liked it so much. Uh, and so when I got hired, uh, you know, I, I it, it was in the back of my mind that it, it might be neat to progress up the ranks and stuff like that. And and then as I got more involved in it and became more passionate about it. it it was sort of the natural progression. You get, you reach a point in time where it's about, you know, growing people and uh, and and giving back and carrying it to that next level. And and uh, I just felt that passion and felt that desire to to go in that direction. Um, and like I said, I, when the position came open, you know, um, and also I think progressing up the ranks helps you sort of realize that you're ready for that next level. This department is nothing like it was when you started 35 years ago. I mean, what's some of the biggest changes that you're proud of? Yeah, well, um, yeah, and you're right. I mean, <clears throat> I tell people all the time, I can remember when it was a big deal when we ran, when we broke 300 calls for, in the year for the first time, uh -huh. you know, and this year we're certainly on pace to break 4,000 calls. Um, but I, I mean, the, the change has been incredible. The, the, I think the passion, the, the pride aspect of it is the level of service that we provide you know, to the community and, and the quality of service that we provide to the community. Uh, the, the ability to, 
to have outstanding people that carry on that tradition that we've feel we feel like we've built over the years. Uh, another thing that we're very proud of is just our commitment to firefighter safety. Uh, you know, and the health and welfare of our folks. We try to make sure that we have the the best quality possible of everything from fire apparatus. You know, and you can uh, so much care and time goes into the specifications of the fire apparatus to make sure that we we are grabbing the whatever is best in the industry for the safety of our people. Uh, the cancer prevention aspect of it, you know, we lost uh, Josh Carney, one of our battalion chiefs, to occupational cancer several years ago, and and the focus on that and making sure that our people are deconning themselves at the scenes and stuff like that, and and just the way we've been able to, you know, serve the community and and grow our people. You've attended a lot of funerals in other counties, like the Charleston Nine yes. and and things like that, where you've had to see what those departments had to go through losing someone in a fire. Um, what do you credit it to that it hasn't happened here? I think it's, uh, and, and again, that's certainly not taken away from places that it has happened because all this can change in a matter of a moment. There's so much that we don't control, you know, because when we go out into homes, we have no idea necessarily what our business is. A lot of times we don't necessarily know what we're going to face. and and. Fires burn much hotter and faster now than they did, you know, 20 years ago. But I credit it to the the, the focus on training. Uh, we're very very passionate about training. Uh, the focus on health and wellness, um, and the focus of our our officers and command staff on taking it seriously. That you know, when somebody comes to work here, you know, we're volunteers here. That they're trusting their safety and their family, their, you know, their wife, their mom, their dad, their kids, are trusting their safety to us as officers. And, uh, and, and that's a heavy burden to bear, but it's the reality and I think it's what makes it so important to us that, you know, when we say everybody goes home, we truly, truly mean it. What are you going to miss most January 1st when you wake up and say, oh my goodness, I'm not going. Yeah. It's hard, you know, and it, it's, it's, there's so many things, you know, that there's so many incre <clears throat> incredible things. Uh, you know, I'm going to miss, obviously, the camaraderie, you know. Uh, uh, I'm going to miss the, um, the, the, and I'm trying to think of the word for it, the, the connection with the community in the sense that, you know, being in a grocery store or something like that, and somebody comes up and tells me, you know, hey, they called 911 last week, you know, because the, they were having a kitchen fire or they were having a medical emergency or whatever and how, how good our, our people took care of them, you know, and, and that sort of recognition, if you will. Um, I, I plan on staying on as a volunteer. This is, this is my home, you know, and, and, and as long as I can help in some other manner, I want to do that, you know, and so... I'm sure I'll still hear the tones going out and stuff like that. So I can't say that I'm going to miss the tones, you know, at two o'clock in the morning and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm. Those are some of I think the, the big things I'm going to miss. You know, when people think back on um, your career, you know, ten, five years from now, ten years from now, and think about the, you know, the Doug Eggerman era at Midway. What do you want them to remember about you as chief? I care. You know. I care. I love the community. I love the people. You know, I love I love our people. Um, compassion, I guess. Um, it's such a tough question. You know what I mean? Uh, um, professional. Um, but I guess you know you could sum it up into the fact that I, I care and I want to make a difference. And I mean, I've just placed it in my heart, and soul for you know 30, 36 years. You know, it's like emotional. Yeah, still. We had staff meeting this morning, you know, and I, I joke about, you know, eyeball sweating a little bit, you know, and, and the terrible humidity, you know, but it's, it's been my heart and soul for 36 years, you know, and so it, it's very, it's very bittersweet in that sense, but, you know, I, I'll be 59 in January and it's like, eh, I need to make sure that I, I've got time for a family.